both of you, Mr. Piyush Goel, for uh, joining us here at the India Economic Conclave, where the best minds are looking at the Indian economy, uh, which is a bright spot. And the numbers yesterday, extremely heartening, with India growing at 7.2%, uh, clearly way above uh, other economies, which are at the moment seem to be struggling. Nine years, 7.2% GDP growth rate uh, clocked. Is it a great story for the Modi Sarkar, Mr. Piyush Goyal? I think uh, it's a great story for India. What matters is that the country today is on the move. The people of India feel empowered. The people of India are collectively in a new mindset, a mindset of a developed nation. Wherever I go, the youth feels encouraged to do more for the country, to work more. There's fire in the belly. I think that's the strength of India which we need to recognize. And that has happened due to the last decade of relentless reform, relentless transformation, effort to meet the basic needs of every citizen of the country so that once all the basics are taken care of, you have a nation of young Indians, boys and girls, aspiring for a better quality of life, all the good things of life, connected digitally, 800 million internet users in the country, and almost every family having a television, watching on television what's happening across the world. And that aspiration is what is driving the new India. Of course, the stable government that the people of India elected the second time over in 2019, giving the Prime Minister Modi an absolute majority, has been a very important element of this success story. His decisive leadership and his sensitive personality have helped combine development with empathy for the poor. So, which is why we say this has been nine years of service, nine years of a better future for the poor the marginalized sections, the less privileged sections of society, and nine years of good governance, collectively defining the India story. Mr. Piyush Koyal, you said young Indians have fire in the belly, but there is a young Indian uh, lighting fires, uh, figuratively so, in parliament, and there are not so young Indians uh, heading various opposition parties who don't seem to be convinced with the delivery uh, of the Modi Sarkar. How do you respond to them? Navika ji, uh, very often in politics, you're almost reduced to a level of opposing for the sake of opposition. And sadly today, that's what is reflected in their behavior. I mean, a matter of national pride, like the new parliament building, getting rid of the colonial building, which has housed our main uh, Lok Sabha and Raj Sabha chambers, for the last 75 years, should have been the collective pride of every Indian. And even putting that into a controversy, not allowing parliament to function with a single point agenda, which didn't have any basis, finding every possible excuse to literally speak uh, badly about the country and, its, and our countrymen in, on foreign shores, only reflects a very poor mindset. I think the nation has, is going to decide to almost ignore such negativity. We are a nation who looks at positive things. Nakaratmak soch ko desh ne puri tarike se dhwast karne ka nirnay le liya. Ab sakaratmak soch is desh ko aage leke jai. But they won the elections in Karnataka. Why did that happen if there was so much of negative There thinking? could have been a variety of reasons and elections will be won and lost. The will be hiccups in this uh, growth journey, the development journey. But uh, in terms of the popularity of the Prime Minister, both in India and universally across the world, is at a high. He is the only Prime Minister who's never seen his rankings or his popularity uh, go below 50% for throughout his nine-year term. Internationally, the last uh, Pew report, I think, or the morning consult report, whichever report you look at, they, they are all reflecting him to be the most popular leader in the world. 
so i think bottom line is the people are appreciating the good work the people understand how good the nation's future looks like how he has impacted almost every person in the country every section of society whether it's nearly 4 crore homes can you imagine it's twice uh, the population of australia and in terms of families eight times the number of families of the whole australian continent who've got a free home in the last few years can you imagine the dignity that has been provided to the poor over 9 years of relentless work i think uh, people understand and appreciate that and to my mind prime minister modi has to serve this nation for many many more years the people want that the world is seeing in him that leader who can deliver that leader who can take the country out of the morass that we had inherited in 2014 the fragile five to top five economy story is something that every indian is proud of and uh, i think uh, elections will come and go but prime minister modi's popularity the love and affection the people have in him the trust that he has earned due to his hard work is something nobody can take away mr piyush goel morgan stanley has been extremely complimentary of the um, indian economy and the decisions taken uh, by your government uh, there is a, a global phenomenon of the acknowledgement of the pace of growth and the pace of reforms in india yet the question i want to ask you is that politics is the art of convincing why is it that uh, the government uh, sees a breakdown in uh, in the process of dialogue and why do you think uh, as far as the parliament uh, benches are concerned there is no consensus there is no dialogue in fact what we've seen is a worsening of the confrontation uh, status well we are keen to have a dialogue and uh, have sought every opportunity to try and reach out to the opposition our colleagues we all talk informally very often as soon as the camera switch off then everybody is a different person altogether so are you saying congressmen uh, speak to you differently on camera and differently off camera 90% of the congressmen individually come and tell us you know we feel very bad we would have loved to be a part of the parliament function but unfortunately we are told we cannot go even during parliament days the frustration that every member of parliament of the opposition has that they are not able to raise the voice on issues of interest to the people of their constituency or of their state the fact that almost everybody who is a public representative wants to be the voice of his constituents is is uh, is evident from them but uh, if your leadership is weak if your leadership is indecisive if your leadership is uncertain of itself or if your leadership is smug as we are seeing nowadays then well it's very unfortunate the breakdown is only causing the nation to suffer and uh, the people of india are watching as they say ye janta hai jo sab jaanti hai और जनता समझदारी से अपना काम करेगी मिस्टर पीयूष गोयल देर आर इश्यूज देर आर चैलेंजेस फॉर द इंडियन इकोनॉमी वेदर यू लुक एट जॉब क्रिएशन वेदर यू लुक एट अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट वेरी ऑफ्टन यू मस्ट हैव बीन आस्क द क्वेश्चन ऑन द प्रोमिस ऑफ टू करोड़ जॉब्स पर ईयर दैट वॉज प्रोमिस बाय योर गवर्नमेंट द डिलीवरी विद द कंपेरिजन टू दैट प्रोमिस uh do you think the challenges that we are seeing uh at the moment are surmountable do you think the india shining uh is going to repeat itself i think maybe a good idea for you at least as a responsible news channel to first read our manifestos before you get carried away by propaganda of course gobel's theory still works sometimes but maybe a good idea to read our manifestos we are very practical we are very clear in our vision we are very clear in what we believe is possible and not possible and therefore what we are looking at is opportunities of work and the people of india also understand that ultimately it's work that is going to matter how how did a 100000 startups start in the country 
most of which in happened in the last seven years. How did a hundred plus companies become unicorns amongst these startups with brilliant, innovative ideas, you uh, leveraging on technology, leveraging on the day-to-day -day issues and coming up with solutions to people's or businesses' problem. All of this happened because there's there are there's a lot of talent out there which is coming up with solutions for the future of India. The government job is possibly what the opposition party keeps referring to all the time. Uh, I wish they would understand that some of their actions are actually hurting India big time. When they go around passing these freebies, they are not empowering the people of India, they are weakening India's potential for the future. We have all seen those old days before 2014. And since many of you must be from Delhi, I'm sure you remember those days where you couldn't live without a DG set in your home. You couldn't live or work without a UPS on your computer. I remember in 2014 when I just joined government, nine years to the day, 26th of May 2014, I was given the charge of power. Within two days of that, there were some thunder storms and the entire northern grid collapsed. It's not as if thunderstorms haven't happened after that. But Prime Minister Modi went to the root of the problem. He created a national grid. So today, India is one of those rare countries with a pan-India single grid, which ensures stability in our power supply, which ensures no region will have to pay exorbitant prices, which ensures that wherever the demand increases, we can meet that demand. Unfortunately, some places are not investing enough on local infrastructure. And Delhi is one of those. I am actually worried for the people of Delhi. Given the way they are splurging government money on advertisements on Times Now and other... We don't get. Uh, we are the channel that exposed the Sheesh Mahal. <laughs> we don't get any ads. We don't get any ads. But I think uh, this, this is the kind of journalism that India respects and India likes to see, which is fearless, which is honest. And I urge you to continue to be that way and not fall prey to falsehoods and false uh, propaganda. But the fact is that Delhi became power sufficient because the government really pushed in a national transmission grid, ensured adequate availability of power. This kind of freebies ultimately weaken your economy, weaken your distribution and uh, generating ecosystem. They don't get paid on time. And end of the day, like in the old days, free power is equal to no power. And that kind of negative politics is what some parties are showing. Gujarat people pay for power and enjoy 24 hours power in all the, across the state for the last almost 20 years now, 18, 20 years. And they're happy to pay because they get quality power. They're able to produce well. They, do, uh, they don't need to use DG sets paying 20 rupees a unit for power. Like it is even now in some areas in Delhi. So I think uh, the important message for all of us is strengthen the nation from the roots. After all, how could we achieve 7.2% growth? It's because nine years of the pursuit of a strong foundation of the Indian economy. We've strengthened our foreign exchange reserves. We've strengthened the uh, story on interest rates. We brought down interest rates significantly. A little increase in the last few months because of elevated inflation, which also has now come down to below 5%. And our elevation was four and a half to six and a half. Whereas Western developed nations went from one or two percent to 12 percent. So India is in that mode of stability with a proactive government strengthening every element of the economy in a manner which will hold us in good stead as we in our pursuit to make India a developed nation by 2047. We are going to go from three and a half trillion today to at least 35 trillion by 2047. And imagine what opportunities it will open up for all the people of India. By 2030, we'll see $2 trillion of exports from India. Imagine what opportunities that will open up. 
In fact, two years, last two years, our exports have gone from 500 billion, which was about 38 lakh crores, to 776 billion, 55% growth in only two years. Over 60 lakh crores of exports, 62 lakh crores of exports. That's the growth. Now, this 24 lakh additional exports adds to jobs, adds to work, adds to business, adds to economic activity, provides an ecosystem where everybody sees prosperity. So this is work in progress, obviously. I can't say that the work is over. The work is never going to get over because this is an aspirational country. This is a country of young minds, young people who are aspiring for the good things of life and will continue to look for growth. So everybody has a television today. Now everybody wants a larger television. Everybody has a refrigerator today. Now they aspire for a double door refrigerator. Most people have a smartphone. Now they want a smartphone with more features, faster or greater memory, greater ability to show them films at high speed. So I think this is what is driving India, innovation, the growth story, everything is on a roll. But uh, while you talk about the innovation, the strides that India has made, Mr. Rahul Gandhi in the United States has said that you're a country, you're making this a country where you are lying down and all that. How do what you is all that? We say that we say in front of Namaskar in front of God. This is our virasat, this is our itihas, this is our parampara and we feel that we are very Gauravanvit mehsus karte hai. We are proud. I am very proud Hindu. Mehr khud shastang namaskar karta hu. Bado ke saamne ya bhagwan ke saamne. Us mein mujhe koji sharam nahi hai. Koji us mein mujhe embarrassment nahi hai. Woh fake tika laga ke ye sab jo bolne ka kaam karte hai. Unko chinta karni chahiye. Ke ek tushti karan ke niti se desh ko koji bhala nahi honne wala hai. This country wants equality. Everybody having a right to follow their religion, follow their culture, respect their traditions. And I think India's strength comes from our traditions. When, when our children do well, as families, we feel proud. Because in India, we still maintain a culture of family values. I, I think uh, speaking in the U.S. and deriding your own country, your own culture, your own tradition, your history, your belief, is a very sad reflection on a person, person's integrity and a person's feelings for his fellow countrymen. He also feels, and, and the entire opposition feels, that uh, democracy is in peril today. You've unleashed uh, all kinds of agencies, the ED, the CBI, which see them more often than uh, members of parliament from your uh, government do. Uh, they also say that, uh, you know, look at a situation. Uh, we were speaking with Mr. Sindhya. We've spoken to the petroleum minister. Nobody wants to lower their tax rates or make uh, petrol or ATF uh, cheaper. Uh, look at the situation in Delhi where uh, the Supreme Court gives a verdict and then your government brings in an ordinance. Each one of these. And look at the way you uh, talk about the media as well. Uh, you say you say that you get advertisements. They say we are Godi media. Uh, everywhere, everywhere there is confrontation. Why is there so much confrontation? Well, that's a package of six or seven questions. And as I told you, I have to receive in one, the... In Nepal, one over six balls are allowed. Nepal Prime Minister just now. <laughs> so I'll try to encapsulate all these issues as quickly as I can. But, well, if democracy was in peril then it was during the emergency. In 1975, when over 100,000 political activists were put behind bars without even a uh, process of law. Tell, show me a single person today who doesn't have the freedom of speech. See the newspapers, see your channels all blaring away with their statements. The fact that they are able to speak their mind and whatever they want to say, good, bad, ugly, honest, falsehoods, whatever, all the falsehoods also carry. So I think this bogey about democracy being in danger is not bought by anybody. It's full free speech, freedom of movement, freedom of expression. Everybody is enjoying all the freedoms. Particularly the Congress has no business to be teaching us democracy. They are the one who threw out, I think, maybe over 50 chief ministers arbitrarily. 
if some chief minister didn't touch the feet, and by the way, uh, not touching the feet lost the chief minister his job, and now they're getting uh, hassled if we touch or is, give, pay respect to God. So I think they really, uh, it's something like, you know, I don't know if you've heard, the deputy leader of the Congress party in Rajya Sabha, the house that I represent, and I don't mind saying his name because he isn't on television saying this, Mr. Pramod Tiwari, deputy leader, and the senior most leader of the party in Uttar Pradesh, country's largest state, is on record on television making a statement that the laws of the land, and he's talking of criminal laws, should be different for the Gandhi family. And I'm literally, may not be an exact letter to letter quote, I don't have it. You can actually play it on the screen if you want. I don't have a PCR because which will play out uh, visuals, but... Uh, he's on record to say that the law, criminal law, ladies and gentlemen, for, of the country should be different for people with a Gandhi surname or from the Gandhi family. And then he goes on to add, I'm not saying in, in uh, conviction the law should be different. I'm saying in sentencing. That makes it even worse. That means... If you get proof of evidence that a Gandhi family member is also wrong or has done a criminal offense, for that the law is okay. But in the sentencing, because he's from the Gandhi family, there should be a new law, separate law, so that the Gandhi family doesn't face the same sentence as you and me. Now, anybody in this room who accepts that, even a single person, but how many of you don't accept that? For how many of you is it not acceptable that Gandhi family should have Come a... on, audience, this one's for you. Not, I mean, imagine, that is the level of discourse on television by a deputy leader of the party in the Rajya Sabha. And uh, to, the, to your point about uh, the media, I think, uh, sadly, the reports that I'm getting about many media houses reflect that large amounts of advertisements are influencing their decision. We as a government from right from 2014 have been at the receiving end of the media for having cut down advertising. I know that you have also complained to me that you guys are not advertising all your achievements. We don't need to advertise our achievements. The people are experiencing those achievements. And Prime Minister Modi has always believed that our work should speak for itself. So my apologies to you, but since uh, Mr. Kejriwal and company are so benevolent in giving you advertisements... Again, that, that Operation Shish Mahal is a Times Now Navbharat story. Our reporters have gone to jail for it, and we do not get... No, I, I sympathize with the young reporter. It was very unfortunate what was done to her. But uh, I'm not singling out Times I'm not singling out any media, but the fact, I don't know if you remember that there were some Delhi blasters, business blasters. There was a program, I used to see the advertisement all the time, that they're going to support startups in Delhi, in Delhi schools. I thought it must be some fancy big program. The number of advertisements and number of double page spreads I saw, I thought it would be some huge program. And then guess what? I found that the total program project cost was 60 crores. They were only going to give 60 crores to support the startup uh, ecosystem in schools in Delhi. I, I think Times Now should now do an RTI or find out information. You'll find a few hundred crores must have been spent on advertising that 60 crore rupee business blasters program. And the RTI the should course, be applied to ED or CBI. You can apply it to anybody you like, but the fact of life is you did wrong, you're, you're getting caught with your hand, finger in the till. If you're getting caught with your finger in the till, you pay for it. After all, tell me, why, did, why are these people not getting bail? The courts are there. Now, when they don't get bail, they blame the courts are also not independent. When they get bail, then Satyamayev Jayate. It's just selective uh, cast, casting as, aspersions on institutions, it's actually damaging the, 
the strength and firmament of India's institutions. It can't be that the election commission is good if they win an election in Karnataka and is prejudiced or is anti-Congress or anti-opposition if they lose an election. I think that narrative has lost its uh, steam. The people of India are watching the fake narratives of the opposition. Opposition will only suffer and regret such uh, blatant falsehoods as they did in 2019. You remember the kind of allegations they tried to put on us. The people of India not only rejected them second time over, but gave us more seats in 2019 than 2014. So our work speaks for itself with the blessings of the people. We believe that we have done a good job. We have been able to meet the aspirations to the extent possible. But as I said to you earlier, this is a nation which should always permanently remain in a state of aspiration. Aspire for more. But that drives growth. That drives prosperity. So let us all always remain aspirational, looking for more, looking for better, looking for better news from times now, looking for better conclaves from times now, and looking for better performance from me. And looking for more time from ministers who are hard-pressed for time. Uh, I had given you just an before hour. I let you, you go, 2024. Took, you 2024. An hour of 2024. Any, any uh, anti-incumbency worries that you may have? Well, I thought we were looking at pro-incumbency. After 10 years? After 10 years? This is just the beginning of a long journey. Thank you. Well, as always, very confident. Thank you very much, Mr. Piyush Goel, for joining me. Thank you. Thank Sorry, you, Honorable Minister. The Minister is always in a hurry. All right, thank you so much, Honorable Minister, and thank you, Navika. I'm moving on.